This is just another update around the garden, and uh, this picture is kind of about where I left off the last time, except for a little bit of fence work is done. But you can see the gravel, that, um, all the walkways have uh, been changed over to gravel, except for that one that goes around the right-hand side there. And uh, that French drain is in, and all the plants are pretty much started, and, you know, things are starting to look pretty good. Um, and you can see some of the mulching is getting done in the other bed up above there and um, still moving some dirt around trying to level things off a little bit but anyhow um, this is just kind of going back to where I left off I had to finish up the fencing around the that little shed there and it's a matter of digging some post holes and uh, actually that clay soil was really kind of hard so it took a while to dig them because you know you can only get a little bit out at a time with a hand thing and I guess was too lazy to put the one on the tractor drag it out and stuff for just three holes so got the holes dug and these are those old fence uh, support 4x4s four four I took took out of the fenced in area up above I'm reusing and just trying to get everything clamped in place and leveled up so I can set the poles just wiggle things around a little bit until everything's square and level and you know I did notice that I'm getting a little bit short on the fence up on this end and I was a little bit worried about you know possible deer problems and it turned out that I was uh, right to start worrying so I used some gravel there you can see I just tamped gravel back in around the holes there try to hold the posts up put a little drainage in there and then again between all the uprights here for mounting the boards on I just used some pressure treated two by fours and I used Craig pocket hole screws to actually put everything together I used two and a half inch the blue coat screws for outside in that little R R3 jig and that makes it real easy to, you know, put fencing parts together, I find. And these uh, crank screws really do hold up well for stuff like that. And it's, you know, a quick job of getting everything mounted together. And there I got the, uh, the posts in and stuff. And these are the boards that I'm recycling from up above there. And I just clamped a 2x4 across the top there just to have a nice... Uh, surface to butt them all up again so that they'll be straight and you can see they're uh you know definitely under a little bit under four foot overall actually maybe a little bit over it but um so it is it is definitely sh getting short in this area and it's just a matter of going back through and nailing it all together and then i did make a gate for it that i'm not going to show and um you know put boards all across the end there also and the French drain I had started is, uh, I've been working on finishing that up. I had originally gone down to the end of the garden there with it. So I got that little Harper Freight trencher out again and had to finish up going down the hill there. And this is where I just thought I'd show you what happens when you, you hit a little rock that's buried in the ground. Now this is actually hooked to my tractor and I've got the, uh, the brake gun on it and I've also got the bucket buried in the ground and you can see little rock will make that uh, drag everything forward uh, and uh, it seems pretty powerful but you know rocks do give it a problem so you have to just work around them until eventually you do uh, get enough dirt around that they come out from around them that they actually come loose and you can move them so this, this, I'm just finishing up this part of the French drain and then uh, I have to pick up a like a junction box and start coming down the hill next but you know, this is as far as I'm going to go with this one for now. So it's just a matter of uh, digging out and then uh, I had some more of that one inch stone left and I'm just you know putting that in like I did on the original video making the drain. I'm actually going to leave this open. I'm not going to put grass over it. I'm just going to leave it so that any surface water can run in it too. So there you can see there's the size of that one rock that was giving me all the trouble. And 
There's one more that's a lot smaller down in there too that you know it does it does give you a problem. But this little thing does work great for jobs like this. So right after this is when all my uh, trouble started. Um, you know, it was really hot out today, and it was uh, hot, humid, and pretty brutal out here. So my wife had the house all closed up. And when I got done, you know, getting this drain finished off here, I decided to go up in the house and, you know, take a, take a rest for a couple minutes and um, cool down and stuff and change my clothes. Well, at that point in time, a deer came along somehow and jumped the fence and got in the garden. Um, it was just one. You can see the footprints of where it jumped actually coming up in the gravel a little bit. But it actually just uh, stood right next to that low section of fence that I had just put in. And, uh, well, there's the drain all finished up. Well, just about, but... It stood right next to that section of fence right there and just jumped over. You can see all the footprints, hoof prints down in the gravel there. And it made its way into the garden and it decided to, uh, these, these, uh, edamame beans were probably about two and a half feet tall at this point in time. And you can see there's maybe about a foot of them left. And then it went over and decided to take take a taste of some of the beet greens and chew on them for a while. And uh, then it meandered around a little bit and decided to eat the tops off the carrots there and started on them. And um, then, uh, you know, it did knock over, break off some other pieces of stuff. For some reason, it didn't. I think those flowers kept it away from that bed there. But you can see the footprints going all over where it came in and walked back over to the corner and jumped right out. And it did grab a couple of the green beans at that point in time. So, you know, this is the first of the damage. And then I went back and I just, uh, I decided to uh, do something and bring the fence up a little bit. I did harvest some of the good beet greens, though, before he came back. And I came up with this idea of uh, getting some of these fiberglass fence posts and putting them in at an angle like that. They sell my tractor supply, and I found out that my Craig drill was the exact size for them. But it turned out I went down to tractor supply to pick up a batch of them in some... Uh, I was going to put four-foot chicken wire up there on them. And it turned out they had a um, those poles that actually had like a uh, clips on them for holding electric fence wire. So I wound up picking them up in some of the white fence tape to go around. I'm not going to electrify it now because I'd have to run grounds up in the air and stuff. But there you can see they they come with uh, little clips on them. And this is the first one going in. And those holes weren't deep enough. I had to go back and drill them a little bit deeper to get them to be in there strong. But this is, you know, what it looked like at first. And it turned out this little Craig jig just worked out perfect for them. Uh, I drew, put a piece of rope down the fence there. You can see string and just lined it up with the string to get them in line. And drilled them like that. Then I did go back later with uh, without the jig in place and bury the drill all the way down. So I figured I'll, um, I'll try it with this tape on there just to see if it slows them down. And it's funny because I talked to my neighbor. He stopped by, guy up the road, and he said... Um, Probably the problem is that uh, when bucks are starting to grow horns this time of the year, they get a craving for soybeans, which I had no idea. And he said this year there are no soybeans planted in the fields around us. Usually there's hundreds of acres of soy planted right around us. But um, this year there's zero. It's all corn for some reason. And they probably got attracted to the soy, and that's why they jumped the fence this year. First time ever. But, um, you know, I don't know how true that is or not, but I'm, I'm going to have a tendency to believe them after, you know, seeing how the first thing they went for is the soy. And then they started nibbling. And, um, you know, I think when I came down on the golf cart, I did see a, a glimpse of them running out of there. But I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know what was going on at the time. So I'm just stretching this tape across. And they say that when you have something white and if the wind blows a little bit, it scares deer away because they think it's another deer's tail 
um, flipping and running away. So, you know, like I said, I'm going to give this a try without being electrified first. And you can see how I've got them all angled out now. And that's supposed to help, too, to, to let them see them. Because I kind of hate to see them get hung up in there if they tried to jump it. But we'll see what happens. And, um, you know, this is just, I thought I'd share, this is my attempt to try and keep them away from now on. And then you can see I had put uh, ashes on some of that stuff because I heard that'll stop them from eating. But uh, by the time I went down to Tractor Supply and got those other things and stuff, it had gotten in again. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that it would keep coming back if I didn't do something. So, you know, here you can see the carrots are really just about gone this time. And soybeans, they did chew down another couple inches. And this time they went after the cucumbers. Tipped them, took the tops off of them, and um, actually you got a little bit of uh, cilantro there. So you got a little bit of spice to go with this meal, and then pr pretty much destroyed the beans. Um, they're uh, they're pretty much toast, but I'm gonna leave them in and see what happens. And there's the pole beans; they're completely gone this time too. So he must have had a little more time to wander around. And you can see all the deer hoof prints in that soft gravel that I had just put down too. And then took a couple bites out of the corn, tore a couple of them out, and uh, you know that was it. And must have got scared away and jumped out and ran. And along the way, he got a couple more cucumbers, all the tops of them, and stuff like that. So. You know, hopefully it'll all grow back over time. We'll see. And I'm hoping this new fence up here keeps them away. And actually, it's been about a week now. And so far, so good. Um, no problems again. Uh, I did see a deer wander by the by the fence, but it went the other way. So I think it's, it's enough to scare them away. And, you know, I'm really hoping it is. And hoping along with that malorganite, it'll keep them away like, you know, it always has before. So there's what it looks like. It looks kind of like Sing Sing Prison when you're in there now working. But, you know, I can't take any more chances. And I do have to, I did have to make a couple brackets to move those bees in three inches so they would uh, work again in the wind. So like I said, I'm hoping this works and, uh, you know, we'll see over time what it does. And if it doesn't, I'm going to go back and run a ground wire between each of those white fence uh, strips here. And then I'm going to electrify it all. Um and hopefully that'll stop everything for once and for all but for now this is you know how it, it seems to be working out so far so good and there's another rainbow we got four drops of rain and the rainbow and those things are bad luck i think but uh you know so the garden's actually uh doing pretty good uh everything else that didn't get chewed on is you know still growing fairly decent um some problems with the tomatoes and stuff i'll show you in a couple seconds but you know nothing really major and those uh craig screws actually are holding up good those holes and you know there's where i'll put the ground wires i'll stretch them down on that fiberglass post if i do have more problems but those pocket holes really are holding them great the winds have uh you know blown them around pretty good so time to get back to work and you know finish on the garden area down there i'm just bringing out some of the uh dust from my shop some sawdust to finish off the back side of that uh that one path that's going to have sawdust in it and wood chips so i'm just really using this as an area to compost the sawdust from my shop so i could put it down there leave it a couple years and scrape it up and put it in the compost pile and then here's my little friend when I went back to grab the other bag. I've got a, about a two foot long garter snake that's been living out here by the garden. It's usually in the compost pile eating bugs and stuff. But um, today I caught it out in the sun sunning. And a uh, real friendly little guy that, you know, doesn't eat anything but bugs. So they're good to have around. Uh, finish up spreading the last bag of that uh, wild cherry sawdust from the uh, all that bathroom vanity work and stuff last year. So you do get a lot of sawdust when you use rough cut wood and you know I figured this is a good way to let it break down and uh, be able to use it back in the garden again. So there they are. The, you know I got that outer path there all mulched in now and um, you know pretty much done inside the garden there for now. Then I've been watering every day and this little tree frog 
actually sits on top of the water faucet there when I go to turn it on and it waits for the faucet to get cold from the cold well water and actually the um, condensation that forms on it so he's my another one of our little garden buddies and now it's time to put a little bit of gravel down along the outside here I uh, I've had some people ask how you know what I put down under the gravel and stuff and what I've been using so far is just six mil polyethylene uh, in this section here I'm going to put down six feet of gravel and then there's going to be another section of raised beds for the uh, butternuts and stuff so I don't need the rest of the garden and then there's going to be a new row of asparagus but that stuff is not going to go in till next spring um, and this is going to be it for now I'm just going to get this gravel spread out so I had to wait for a day where there was no wind to actually even attempt this because uh, we have been having some really bad winds and nothing but sunshine lately it's unbelievable how little moisture we have you can see just how dry it's everything is just dry and dust and been watering the garden every single night for the last month so first thing I'm going to do is uh, just stretch out this plastic so that uh, you know it covers the area where I want to be and you can see how it's kind of tapered downhill to the uh, French drain there too <coughs> So, uh, you know, once I get the plastic spread out and a couple inches up on that bottom fence board there, I'm just going to start bringing some wheelbarrows full of gravel in to hold it in place and, you know, be able to start spreading it around. So this is the toughest part. Uh, you know, we've had some pretty warm days and then we've had some uh, cold days. It's been unbelievable this year. But the winds just really, you know, have not let up much. So this was a, another four ton load of uh, gravel here. And um, I'm just going to start spreading it now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get it three to four inches thick on top of this polyethylene. And that's what I did in that original section of the garden. Uh, Eight, eight or nine years ago and you know everything was good no weeds or anything so I figured that uh, this will be a, a lifetime solution now and it, you know it does take a little while to to spread it out and move it with a wheelbarrow but I've got plenty of time And another possible problem why I had the deer problem this year is uh, because I'm cleaning up and leveling everything. They say uh, deer don't like it when you have like junk piled around and things look on level and stuff like that. So that may be another, you know, cause for my, all my headaches too, trying to get everything cleaned up in, uh, you know, wide open areas. You can see that was um, actually that trailer load makes for 15 tons of gravel that I've gone through now. So it's, uh, you know, I do have some sore arms and back every once in a while for moving it, but uh, it's real nice with that dump trailer being able to go over and grab a couple tons at a time. Then when I get done, I'm just going back with the pitchfork and uh, any low spots in the gravel, which is right over that French drain, I'm just poking uh, the pitchfork through there and putting some perforations in it. And that will keep water from puddling up in there and um, actually causing mosquito problems or anything else later. So I do have some cleaning up and edgings to do around there. And, um, you know, now I've got the... This uh, fencing seems to be working out good so far. No problem since. And got this gravel spread, but, you know, this is where I'm going to stop for this year. And um, we'll take a walk in the garden and, you know, take a look at the plants now. So there are the eggplants. They, uh, they're all chewed up. In the beginning, I was using neem oil for those flea beetles. And first couple of weeks, it worked. Then all of a sudden, for about a week, there were a million of them that came in and just, it they ate it like gravy and um now it's working again so i don't know what's going on with that but uh you can see the eggplants have a ton of holes in them but they're still growing good putting flowers on and you know i think everything will be fine in the end and the peppers are really you know as always they're really doing amazing um 
no problems at all, nothing's eating them, uh, no pest problems, bug problems, and you can see we've been eating them. Those are some of the Cubanellis. We've been eating the peppers for about a week now, really enjoying the flavor of them. Something that you miss over the winter. And here's some Jimmy Nardellos. They're really good when they get red. They're, uh, you know, they're really super sweet Pimientos. And these are some of those Belgium reds. These are little red ones that'll be, you know, real red and sweet and not too long from now. And these are some of the, I think they're Adjavarskis, they call them. And they're another pepper that'll turn nice and red and, uh, you know, real flavorful. And then that last one there, they're the little decunos. They're the little Italian stuffing peppers with thick walls that they're doing good now too. And you can see the okra is doing good. I'm thinning it out as it grows a little bit. And these uh, edamames have started growing some leaves back now. So it looks like they might survive. And the beets actually, uh, the, the leaves on them have been growing like crazy. I can't believe how fast they're coming back. So there's no problem with them. And also the carrots. You can see the carrots tops, brand new tops coming up. So. You know, I'm not sure what it'll do to the carrots, but the deer didn't really seem to hurt too much, at least. And there's some shallots there and there in that bin. Doing really great. And the garlic, uh, I think the garlic's almost ready to harvest pretty soon. It's really um, you know, starting to look dried out and stuff like that. And those potatoes I threw in the ground are looking really good. And there's the rain gauge. Since the beginning of this month, we've had five sixteenths of an inch of rain. And that's it. So we've been watering every night to keep this stuff alive. And there's the other bin of shallots. They're, they're doing really good. And these cucumbers are starting to grow up new vines and stuff where they were chewed off. So, you know, they look really good. And over here, these cukes are coming back. And um, there was a couple peppers chewed off over here, too. He did take a couple of them off, but... They seem to be doing okay. And you can see the cilantro's really uh, started coming back too now. So I'm pretty amazed. The only thing that I think is shot are the beans. They're really uh, doing nothing. They did grow a couple new leaves. But um, I think they're going to be toast. And the little melons are just starting to take off there. And um, the pole beans. I see some new leaves on them where he ate them off. So, you know, they're doing better. These carrots and dill over here did very bad because of the dry. I let them dry out one day and that was it. Yeah, you can see those cucumbers are starting to grow back now too. And the corn, you know, a couple of them were chewed off, but they look pretty good. And you can see how they lean from the wind. They're all leaning to the east because we get so many high winds that, you know, it just keeps them blowing over. Like the trees up here look the same. And then the um, zucchinis are doing good. We'll be having some zucchinis next week, I think, some little ones. The only thing that's not doing that great are the tomatoes. And um, they're just not growing right, and they, uh, they've they got some problems. And uh, when I got that second load of mulch, that's all I used around the tomatoes here. I think that was a bad, I mean compost, I think that was a bad batch of compost. It was mostly wood chips and very little organic matter. And um, you can see I've... Getting a lot of curling of the leaves, which actually some of that is stressed from all the winds and the sun we've had and stuff. But the plants just are not growing at the rate they should be. You can see they're kind of kind of stunted and stuff. And I'm pretty much sure that it's uh, all related to that compost that I used. I'm going to try to put some of my own compost on top of there next to see if I can help them out. But um, the wind and sun really, you know, doesn't help on top of that. So you can see they're, you know, they're coming along and they're getting some flowers and tomatoes on them, but they're not, uh, not as big and fat of stalks and stuff like that, like they should be. So I'm, you know, I'm definitely going to blame it on that second load of compost I got because that's what I used around this whole area, and they all are reacting about the same. And you can see we got some little uh, Paul Robesons there coming in, so you know, a couple weeks we should have some of them. And even with the high winds and stuff, these things are holding up good. Uh, you know, nothing's broken out or even come loose. So, you know, I think it's going to work. And, you know, I just hope it does work for the rest of the year. 
And there's my gourds. They're coming up with some sunflowers in them. I'm starting to get the uh, the zucchinis, and uh, these are yellow squash and zucchinis. I got mulch. And I'm starting to get it all mulched out, and I've got a bunch of sunflowers actually coming back from last year also. And these are the butternuts and pumpkins up here, and you can see they're all pretty much mulched off and stuff. So that cyclone rake's been working pretty good. I just hope we get some rain to get the grass growing faster so I can, um, you know, get a little more of it. And you see I moved a bunch of dirt over here to do some leveling. So, you know, that'll be the next video I'm working on. But actually, the um, garden's doing good now, and it seems to be recovering except for the uh, edamames. And the deer have been staying down here by the pond lately. So, you know, that's a good thing. And, you know, hopefully it remains that way. Then you know, I just thought I'd you know, share this with you and show you my attempt to uh, keep deer out now that I've had a, uh, you know, I've had a problem. And luckily it looks like it was only one that got in there. And i um, hoping it was like my neighbor said they were after the soybeans. But who knows? And there's my little buddy in the garden and you know he's always around somewhere as I run into him all the time and you can always find this little frog on top of the hose thing there at night when I'm getting ready to water he must have a built-in clock so he knows and uh, I'll do another update uh, in a couple weeks that little golf cart has turned into being some workhorse thanks for watching please subscribe